Hello again, my fellow Moto dudes and dudettes, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to change your oil in your KTM RC and Duke 390s. And I will also show you how to reset the service message on your information display. The model year of my RC 390 is a 2017, but I'm pretty sure the procedure is standard across the years. For those of you who just clicked on this video to see how to reset the service message on your bike, I'm going to go ahead and show that process first before I get into the oil change. That way you don't have to wait through the whole video. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to reset the service message on your motorcycle. First, put your key in the ignition and turn it to the on position. Next, make sure your kill switch is turned to the on position, but do not start the motor. Next, press the mode button once, or however many times it takes to get from error, side stand down, to actual FC. Next, hit the set button twice until you see the wrench and the word service with the zero below it. It may be in miles or kilometers. Now press and hold the set button for at least 10 seconds or until you see the number go from zero back up to the full oil life amount. Lastly, hit the mode button until you get back to the error side stand down message and you should be off to the races. Alright, tools you're going to need for this project are Allen keys to remove the belly pan, a socket wrench with an 8mm socket to remove the oil filter cover, a 13mm socket to remove the front drain plug, and also an 18mm socket to remove the left side oil screen. You are also going to need some needle nose pliers and or a flathead screwdriver to help you remove the oil filter carefully from its housing. The replacement oil filter I used was the High Flow Filtro model HF155. You can get this filter on Amazon or go to the manufacturer website at hiflo.com. Some people swear by the KTM official approved oil brand of Motul, but for research purposes I wanted to see how easy it would be to get a hold of this weight oil. So I shopped around at some of my local auto parts stores like Krager, AutoZone, Pet Boys, and even Walmart in the automotive section, and I found it was actually readily available, and for a fraction of the price I found Motul for on Amazon. You're going to need 15W50, and you're going to need at least 1.8 quarts that's 1.7 liters for those of you that go by the metric system. Don't forget an oil pan to catch all of the used oil and some containers to put it in when you take it to be disposed of at your local auto parts store. Alright, now moving on to the procedures. While you do not have to remove the side fairings, step one should be to remove the belly pan. There are a total of four Allen screws that you will need to remove to get the belly pan out of your way. These two back here as well as these two visible from the front of the motorcycle, right behind the front wheel. One on the left side, and one on the right side. Once you get those four Allen screws removed, you will also need to pull the post from the side fairing out of the rubber grommet on each side of the belly pan. One on the left side, and one on the right side. Now, it may help you to remove the lower two screws on each of the side fairings, but it's not entirely necessary. With the belly pan removed, you should be ready to remove the drain plugs as well as the oil screens. Let's start with the one on the left side of the engine. For this one, you will need your socket wrench with an 18mm socket. Oil will begin to drain out as soon as you remove this plug, so make sure you've got your oil pan in place. The screen should be resting right inside. Go ahead and give it a little tug, or if it doesn't break free right away, 
go ahead and get your needle nose pliers or screwdriver and gently pry it out. Be careful not to apply too much pressure when removing the screen as it is very similar to the reusable filters in coffee makers. It's sturdy enough to get the job done, but it's not unbreakable. Go ahead and rinse any miscellaneous deposits on the screen off and set it aside to dry before putting it back in its place. Okay, the second drain plug I'm going to address is on the front of the engine block itself. For this one you will need your socket wrench and 13mm socket. It's important to note that this screen is going to be attached to the plug when you remove it. So slowly remove it straight out, don't pull it to the side right away or you risk snapping it off. As with the other screen, go ahead and wash any debris or deposits off of it and set it aside to dry before reinstalling it into the engine. While it's not necessary to replace these screens at every oil change, if you notice anything damaged or out of the ordinary, I'd suggest go ahead and getting an extra pack just in case. I'll include some links in the description so you can see where to go to get these replacement parts. Lastly, you'll need to remove these two 8mm screws to get the oil filter cover off and swap out your old oil filter for the new one. For this, I used a socket wrench with an 8mm socket. Once you remove both screws, you should be able to remove the oil filter cover. The fun part is removing the oil filter itself. Be careful not to score or gouge the inside of the oil filter compartment as you pull the old one out. Any damage you cause while trying to remove the oil filter might lead to oil leaks later. So in all the steps of performing an oil change, this is the part where you want to exercise the most due diligence. Once you have removed the old oil filter, remove any excess oil still in the reservoir by carefully tipping the bike over or simply inserting some clean towels to soak it up. Now you should be ready to install the new oil filter. Don't forget to compare it to the old filter just to make sure that you got the right product. With the new oil filter in place, make sure to securely fasten both 8mm screws finger tight before using the socket wrench. This will ensure that you do not over tighten one or the other. Once both screws are finger tight, proceed to tighten them down with the socket wrench, doing only a quarter turn at a time and alternating back and forth between the two screws to ensure that they tighten down evenly. Also make sure to reinstall both other oil screens and their respective plugs before adding oil to the engine. Alright, now with everything sealed up tight, you should be ready to start filling up the engine with oil. Go ahead and start by removing the oil fill cap located on the right hand side of the engine. Next, to ensure that you don't spill, go ahead and insert a clean funnel. As you can see here, I'm using mobile brand 15W50 weight motor oil. This engine should only need 2 quarts, or just under 2 liters. But what if you lose track of how much oil you've already put in? Or what if you have a much bigger jug and you don't know exactly how to measure out 1.8 quarts? Fear not moto dudes and dudettes, for KTM has foreseen this problem and installed the sight glass on the right hand side of the engine block, just a little bit down and to the left of where the oil fill cap is. Just make sure the bike is straight up and level and you should be able to see where exactly the oil level is through that sight glass. KTM took it a step further and marked for you a low oil line and a high oil line to show you exactly where your oil level is at and whether you need to add any or maybe drain some out. Once you have finished filling the engine with oil and putting the belly pan back on, don't forget to reset the service notification on the display using the instructions at the beginning of this video. Alright, once you've cleaned up the mess and disposed of the used motor oil and oil filter properly, you should be ready to get back on your bike, hit the road, and ride off into the sunset. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel everybody, I really appreciate it. I hope this video helped you out or maybe inspired you to start working on your own motorcycle. I find by keeping a close eye on my motorcycle and working on it myself, it keeps me more in tune with it. It also makes it easier to figure out when something is going wrong. Alright folks, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel to let me know that I'm doing a good job. And as always, have fun and ride safe.